what is naturalist intelligence? You came to the right place because in this video, I'm going to discuss common characteristics of naturalist intelligence, and then I'm going to go into a couple other cool things like popular career choices, famous people with naturalist intelligence, and finally, I'm going to give you specific ways you can increase naturalist intelligence. I'm Janice, and you're watching Sharp Cookie. On this channel, we cover a lot of different topics related to learning, studying, and problem solving. So if these are topics that you're interested in, please subscribe and hit the bell to be notified. I post new videos every week. So naturalist intelligence, this is part of a series that I'm doing on the nine types of intelligence by Howard Gardner. Now, if you want just like a really nice broad overview of all the nine types, I have another video on that that you can check out after this one, of course. And I'm also going to do a little bit more of a deep dive on the types, which is what this video is. So I'm selecting one of the types and we're just going a lot deeper than what I do on the intro video. Now, at its most fundamental level, naturalist intelligence is an affinity, appreciation, sensitivity to nature and the natural world. So this could be weather, this could be stars, this could be animals, plants, gardening, all of these types of things, this connection to the natural world. People that are high in naturalist intelligence have a lot of similar characteristics. So they enjoy outdoor activities, no surprise. So they might like hiking, camping, fishing, anything super outdoorsy, rock climbing, all of these types of things. Or maybe they're really into collecting things. So they like to collect rocks, seashells, feathers, anything from the outside. So these are just some common traits that people have with a high naturalist intelligence. They might also have tools for exploring nature, a microscope, a telescope. They just like to kind of go deeper than the average person would. They also generally have an intense interest in the natural world. So this could be the person that's sitting at home researching rock formations or that's really interested in astronomy you know they might have this very specific thing where they research a lot or it could manifest as animals so they have a lot of pets or they en enjoy going to places where there's animals that they can observe they like bird watching animal watching maybe they're into nature photography so it could manifest in a lot of different ways but you can kind of see how there's this common thread. Um, for the people that are more inclined to plants, they might be really big into having 100 house plants in their house, or they may be into gardening. And now I'm going to give you a few characteristics that you might notice in children. Children will get super interested in some topic related to nature. They might research everything about polar bears or everything about orca whales or dinosaurs. And, and they'll get super into it. They'll know more than any adult knows on, on that specific thing related to nature or rocks. Um, they might go outside with their magnifying glass and, and start looking at rocks that they find outside or come back with a whole bucket of seashells and all that kind of cool stuff. Here's another one of my favorite characteristics with kids is they're the type of kids that like getting their hands dirty. They like the, all the yucky thing. They'll just jump into that gross, muddy river and start pulling things out of it and think about how cool it is. Those are my, you know, naturalist type of kids and students. And then the last one I've noticed with kids is they ask a lot of questions related to nature. So if there's a child in your life that's always asking you, why is grass green? Why is the sky blue? Why do some clouds look like this and others like that? What do the stars mean? What are stars made of? All of these kinds of questions signal a really high naturalist intelligence. Does this sound like you or someone you know? If it does, I'm really curious. Let me know in the comments 
which of these characteristics really resonate with you. All right, let's move on. We're gonna cover a few common career choices that have people in them with high naturalist intelligence. Animal trainer, breeder, farmer, park rangers, geologist, horticulturist, landscaper, marine biologist, any kind of biologist really, veterinarian, zookeepers, astronomers, paleontologists, forensic scientists. That's my list. So a lot of it covers careers in the sciences, but not necessarily. So, and again, this isn't a comprehensive list. It's just meant to give you a taste, an idea of types of careers that you might be into or you might think about making a career switch to if this is an intelligence that resonates with you. Okay, next we're gonna cover just a few famous people. Sometimes when you talk about famous people, it brings it into reality and you're like, oh, now I know what it looks like because I can see it in this other person. One person is Charles Darwin. Um, we've all heard of him, the theory of evolution. He's just a really good example. He observed nature. He came up with a lot of insights based on his observations. And that's a big thing in naturalist intelligence that I didn't mention earlier, is they really are good observers of naturally occurring phenomenon, animals, uh, just anything in nature. Another example of someone famous is Jane Goodall. You may know her from her work with chimpanzees. Or if you haven't heard of her, I'm pretty sure you've heard of Steve Irwin, you know, the, the crocodile hunter. He was this man in Australia who was super into animals and really talked a lot about conservation. Um, that's actually another really good career option is being some type of conservationist. Uh, very, very common, or working in a nonprofit dealing with conservation of the earth and its natural resources. Another example, Lewis and Clark. So this covers a lot of wide things. Explorers, explorers. Sir Edmund Hillary, who was the first to reach Mount Everest, the summit with his Sherpa. These are people, these adventure type people have really high naturalist intelligence. And now for the last part of this video, I'm gonna cover ways you can increase naturalist intelligence. Now, some of these ways deal with resources and books and, and things like that. So if there's a specific resource that I think would be helpful, I'm going to link it in the description. Okay, so my first tip for increasing naturalist intelligence is a no-brainer. Spend more time outside. It's very hard to develop naturalist intelligence when you're indoors in sort of an artificial environment. It's, it's going to happen naturally if you go outside. My second tip is get a nature journal. Again, I've linked up some resources for nature journals for kids and adults. You can record the things you see. If you're more creatively inclined, you can start to draw and diagram the things you see. Maybe use paints or watercolors or, or colored pencils. You can have a lot of fun with this, but just drawing a plant, a flower, something, the, the sunset, anything outside is going to really attune you to those amazing natural wonders. My next tip is to just learn as much as you can about nature. That could mean taking a class. Maybe it's an online class. Maybe you read some articles or you check out some books in the library. Whatever it is, find ways that you can research and learn more about nature. Whatever part of nature interests you the most. Similarly, just watch YouTube videos. So if you're not a big reader, YouTube is an amazing resource for anything. So if you wanna learn more about astronomy, research that, or maybe geology, or maybe biology, whatever it is, or, or the different types of birds. I mean, it gets really exciting. So just find one aspect of nature, cloud patterns, I don't know, that really is interesting to you and watch some YouTube videos on it. 
My next tip is to get involved in a local conservation group or something else local in your area. For example, my area has a community garden that I volunteer at. It's really one of those ways where I can learn more by hearing it explained to me from other people. I didn't really grow up gardening, so it's not something that I'm just gonna like go out and just start doing by myself. So this was a good first step for me was to volunteer with this community garden because there were a lot of experienced people that were teaching me things and I didn't feel like I was going to mess anything up and there wasn't any sort of financial investment in this and it wasn't going to take up space in, in you know my outdoor space at home. Find something in your community that you can join, get involved with. Um, maybe it's like managing their social media accounts. Whatever it is, use your own skills to get involved with a local group. My next tip is for some people that really like tools, contraptions, technology, things like that. Invest in some kind of tool that will help you explore the natural world. This could be a set of binoculars, a camera, a telescope, a microscope. Find a tool, even just a magnifying glass. And my last one is care for a pet or a house plant. You don't have to go all in and, and just go get a dog or, or something that's a big commitment. You could get a low maintenance type pet like a fish or a hermit crab or something else like that if you wanna start small. Same with the house plant. You can research plants online and find something very hardy. I'm in Southern California. There's a lot of succulents that you basically never have to water. They will live through anything. All right. That's all I have for today. I hope you learned a lot about this deep dive into naturalist intelligence. I have a lot of other videos, especially that one that's a broad overview of all the nine types. I definitely recommend that one for getting more information on this. If you're interested in online tutoring, I provide one-on-one -on -one virtual tutoring. You can find more information when you email me at hellosharpcookie at gmail.com. Also, if you're into any sort of brain puzzles, things like that, I have a brain puzzle book that I developed. You can get that for free. I have a link in the description. All right, that's all I have for you today. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And again, if you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and subscribe. I post really cool videos every week on learning, studying, problem solving, intelligence, you know, all this like nerdy stuff that I love. So thanks so much for watching. Again, I'm Janice. Take care. Bye.